welcome to the special edition of Faith and Friends. This week we're heading back into the kitchen to revisit some of your favorite food segments from this past year. So pull out your note cards and get ready to write down some delicious recipes. Hello, and we are here for a food segment. I'm so excited. We are making no-bake monster cookie energy balls. Yes, energy balls. Energy balls. They are so Supposed to be healthy, and I actually, they are healthy. So we've got our peanut butter, which would be like our protein, and our chocolate chips, which give you that little extra That's the energy zing. part, right? That's always the energy. But, so today we are going to make it. I have my assistants, Abby and Andy. It's the two A's, Abby For the A and team. Andy. The A yeah. team, yes. I love it. <laughs> but we are gonna make these energy balls. Really super easy, it takes 10 minutes or less, depending on how fast you are. Um, but all you need are Oats, so half, a one and a half cup of large oat flakes, half cup peanut butter, a half cup of honey, a fourth cup mini M&Ms, and now today we are actually using peanut M&Ms because I personally love peanut M&Ms, so that's happening. And we also need a fourth cup of mini chocolate chips and a half a teaspoon of vanilla to give it that little zing, you know. Is saying? that the energy part, the vanilla? <laughs> sure. We're okay. trying to find the energy. So we're going to actually start it. We need to measure out a one and a half cup of oats. So Abby, Dig it out do there. the honors. We're gonna put it all into a large bowl. This is literally all we're doing is throwing everything into one big bowl, stirring it up, and then making them into balls. That looks like a half. That looks like a half. So seriously, we're very easiest specific thing here. ever. All right, so we've got that. We're gonna put our honey, which we already measured our half cup of honey. Yep. We're gonna you ready? <laughs> no, Andy, not that much honey. It actually says it's salad oil. Not that much honey. Olives have changed in my day. <laughs> we got the honey. We got our and honey that's in that's local there. honey, right? This is local honey. What do we say? I don't remember where we From said. From Ridgeway. This is, yeah, this is Atlanta. local honey. Or Spain. Um, <laughs> you can use whatever honey you want, though. We're going to grab our peanut butter, and if... You're doing all the work here. Good job, Abby. Abby's right. getting... Well, wait for it, because you've got I want to do the do. cruncher over there. Uh, this is secret. Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay, so we have our main ingredients that are going to make sure that our balls are able to become balls because if not it's just going to be like a mess. Humbles. Yeah, so you want to be able to have that stick together, right? So I'm going to have you stir all of that up and Andy, while that's happening, I'm going to have you crush our peanut M&Ms. Yes, we have a crusher. And you really crusher. need a crusher? All of that, all of that, you might want to put it on the, because oh, it might fall. Oh, it's coming apart already. Yeah, it, that's how you get the M&Ms out. Ah! <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're a master at that. Not really sure they're that crushed. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is great. Hey, Burn, you want to try mixing? They're crushed a little. But okay, I'll mix. They're not as crushed as this kind, though. No. That's our finished product. So, Andy, if you would like to put your M&Ms into, into our my mouth. lovely mix. <laughs> not into your <laughs> mouth, Andy. Not helpful. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. and we're going to have you stir that together because Abby's, Abby's She's passed it on to me. the queen stir. So we put our M&Ms in there. We've put, don't oh, put Jeff? those in there. Oh. Not yet. We put our M&Ms in there, our oats, our honey, our peanut butter. And I guess now you can put your chocolate chips We've in there. We've made it. Yes. Oh, what? Get you it all in there. You miss it. There you go. Okay, and the... You're going to just eat those m &Ms? Is that all right? <laughs> Cook has to sample, right? <laughs> and the next thing, and the final, ingre woo, the final ingredient that you need is vanilla. So I'm going to have you pour one half of a teaspoon. I had to make sure that was a teaspoon. Just a splash? Just a little dash, a little splash of vanilla. This is, this is actual vanilla made with... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is that too much? What? Maybe. <laughs> or put three-fourths of a... You want more? No, 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 okay. no, 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 we're good. Okay, so... Mm, smell that vanilla. <laughs> mm. So this mixture is, once it's completely put together, we'll be able to just take it and make it into balls, which we did wash our hands, correct? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank goodness. That would be really awkward if we didn't. So wash your hands before you make these because you're going to use your hands. If you could rip some parchment paper off oh, sure. for me and lay it out on the table. How well, big do we need for that? <laughs> we'll steal some more of your m and <laughs> Some of this out of the way. Beautiful. All right. We're going to lay this Looks good. That's a good idea. There we go. Flatten it out. There you go. Flatten it out. Okay, so it looks like we are ready, and we just need to 
We don't have a spoon. What do we think of we that? We just put our hands in oh, it. Oh, we just put our hands in it. Hey, I'm the expert here. No, just kidding. Just take it over. <laughs> Uh-oh. So we're just going to make little balls. You'll probably do about a spoonful of, of food, of the energy bite, you know, and you're going to roll it up, and you're going to lay it on the parchment paper. No, we're not going to eat it yet. you got to refrigerate them first. Hmm? How yeah. long do you refrigerate them? You refrigerate these for 20 minutes. These are like, or you, you could just snow, eat them like throw this. these at people. I mean, yes. Or you could just eat them as is, be, but they're better cooled, taste better, and they're cool. going to be they're going to be contained a little better. So, okay. continue to roll them. There's some big ones. There's some small ones. There's some that aren't even a ball yet. There we go, Abby. I fixed it for you. Andy, what is this? It's a ball. <laughs> What's wrong with that? This is the tiniest ball I have ever seen. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just eat that? <laughs> We're allowed to eat them? No, no! Only the expert! No! <laughs> Those are good. Good job. They're really good. No, they're no. really good. Keep balling. I'm eating. Um, peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter was a bad idea. I didn't swallow. Next week, we'll be making milk. <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually make milk. Well, I guess you can. Almond milk. Cows live in studio. Mm -hmm. I'm Faith and Friends. <laughs> I'm gonna milk the cow. I see that. <laughs> Why didn't we bring milk on? This would have been perfect with milk. So you need to make sure you have a glass of milk when you right. eat these energy balls right. because they're quite yummy. But I taste the vanilla. I um, think the vanilla makes it taste good though. Yeah, I agree. You get you know you I actually like it with a little extra, a little extra yeah. vanilla. It's good. Yeah. But we still have a lot of material, so. We are finished. This actually is going to make about 16. It serves 16 balls. Average They're size. energy balls. If Average you size, but or or make seven <laughs> Sorry, questionable size it. balls. Questionable. I'll help you out since Andy is just hand. eating. What are you doing, Andy? I made a big one, so I'm eating it. <laughs> That's not how this works. It you got to finish. Up. What you, is this? You've never watched You're this before. You're eating over the bowl. <laughs> Well, it is the month of October, which means pumpkins are a plenty. Pumpkin spice everything can be found pretty much everywhere you go. But did you know that if you want to make pumpkin pie or pumpkin cheesecake and your recipe says to open up a can of pumpkin, well, there is a better way that you can do it. And we're going to share with you what you need to do. After today, Mark and Andy are going to be so experienced as far as preparing pie pumpkins that I'm sure they're going to go home and want to make pumpkin pies all the so time. So there's a difference no. between a regular pumpkin and a pie pumpkin. Well, I don't know what you would call a regular pumpkin. Like, maybe this is a regular pumpkin to you. You just cut my beautiful blue cheese pumpkin that I was going to wait and keep for a while. I want to see what color it is inside. I guess is that I won't inside? be using this one as decoration. Just turn it. Um, Towards the it wall. It is orange inside. It is orange inside. This is a blue cheese pumpkin, and this is an edible pumpkin. Here's a little tiny pumpkin. Yes, there's all kinds of different pumpkins. The kind that you carve are different than the kind that you use for your pumpkin pies. Those are called pie pumpkins. All right. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> so we're going to today show you how simple it is. It does take a little work, but the quality that you get in the end is a higher quality pumpkin product and um, it's just always good. Plus the satisfaction of doing it yourself instead of exactly. a store-bought pumpkin. There well, you might, go. Might or might not be overdue. <laughs> Let's get started here so we can take a look. The very first thing you have to do before you guys don't even start yet cut is you pumpkin. simply have to cut the pumpkin. However, as I did some internet research on the proper way to prepare a pumpkin, a pie pumpkin for pumpkin pie or other things is I learned that you can just outright cut it, which is what you're going to do, Oh. Or you can bake it for 45 minutes, oh. which is supposed to soften it and make it easier to cut, which Mark is going to mm -hmm. test that one out. Oh. So we're going to check and see. So the first thing, guys, you need to do is you're just going to cut this thing in half. Like this way? Cut it in half. I would recommend you actually, actually like, stab this that. This way. So that you can... It's not really the halfway point. And that was quite easy to slice in oh. half. Well, look at that. Mark is winning so far. It smells good baked. <laughs> Andy is not getting too far. Now, I have always done this the Andy style, and it's worked for me. You just simply have to cut it in half. Baking is much easier. Yeah, this, I'm worried Now, about obviously, that. that does take more of a prep time. You bake that for about, what, half an hour, right? Yeah, uh, at 400 degrees, and you know, it was really simple. Just 
threw the pumpkin in the oven. You're Didn't rubbing it in. Didn't have to do anything basic. Hey, I believe in you, Andy. I, I know you can do this. Just think that how accomplished you'll feel. In the way. So we'll there. let Mark start on the next step while Andy, oh, I think Andy's almost there. But I have the stem now. What do I do with that? I'll just break it. Okay, so the very next step that is necessary is to pull out the pumpkin seeds and the strands. Now, I have found that a pasta server like this works out pretty well. So one of you guys can use this if you want to. Um, don't forget that these pumpkin seeds can be saved and used for other things. We did you that can two years roast ago, right? them. Yeah. You can roast them. Um, you can also put your pumpkin seeds and the strands in a bowl and put them in the refrigerator. If you don't have time to roast them now, you just have to use them within a couple of days. So Andy's using the hand method. Is that a bad Mark method? is using the spoon method. No, I seeds? think it's whatever works. Whatever works. You know, God created pumpkins before he created spoons. I'm not sure how they the would have, I'm not sure how they would have <laughs> cut them open, but you know, that's the case. <laughs> so how clean does it need to be exactly? Well, I, uh, that, you're doing a very good job. I'm not done. That's good. Then. So are you finding this to be pretty easy to spoon it out since Absolutely. it's already mm -hmm. been somewhat yes. um, the fact that it's pre baked makes this much easier. Much easier, yeah. Now whether And it's nice and toasty in my hands. Ah. It's a hand warmer. <laughs> Take that on a cold Friday night That's to the right. football game. You're going to be needing that. It's been nice in October, but um, we live in Ohio. It could be cold in a matter of two hours. So once the guys are all finished cleaning the pumpkin out, then comes the next point, which really will take uh, more time. That's when you actually start baking it so that you can get the pumpkin flesh. Mm. Guys, can you see the flesh? You see where Is the that actual that part? Yeah, the That's meat right. of the pie. Now, in an actual, like if you're getting a jack-o'-lantern big one and you're wondering if you could do this with one of those big big pumpkins, yes, you can. The only thing is you're going to have a much thinner layer mm. of flesh, so you're not going to have as much meaty yeah, stuff in there that you have with the pie pumpkins. All right, so whether you have pre-baked your pumpkin, like Mark did, or whether you have not pre-baked your pumpkin, the next step does require baking it for a pretty long period of time and it's up to you how long you want to bake it. Set your, set your oven to at least 350 degrees, well, 325 to 350, and now you're going to kind of slow cook it for at least two hours. It could even go longer than that. It will just intensify the flavor over time. I'm happy with my pumpkin. You're happy. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> oh, no, I think you've done great. You've done, in fact, both of, it, both of these look great. So the next step would be to put it on a plate Voila. Which I'm going to trade you. Okay. I'm going to hand this to you guys. I did pre-bake a pumpkin last night, so we can move on to the next step. Sorry about that. <laughs> if you drop an unbaked pumpkin, you're more likely to break a toe than if you drop the one that was softly baked. And it's less messy. <laughs> it's less messy. <laughs> There's a pumpkin. That's on, on your my, foot. On Are you okay? Foot at this very Is that moment. your broken foot? <laughs> So let's pretend we just put those in the oven and they are going to bake now for quite a while. It's going to start smelling wonderful in your kitchen. And here's the deal then. After you are finished with the baking, the next thing you have to do is you have to clean out the flesh. So if you clean out the flesh and go ahead and put it in the bowl. That's freshly baked. That is. Do I use that the spoon? Sure. And that's all good in there. All that flesh. That is. That is very similar to what you're going to have in, in here. Now, a secret I learned many years ago, if you can't get enough flesh out of a pie pumpkin, mm -hmm. you can actually use a butternut squash, and you'll have a lot yeah. of the same results. And butternut squash has tons more. As you can see here, the guys, again, are using multiple ways to do this. And it just becomes easier correct. to skin it this way. <laughs> They're all correct. Isn't that wonderful? There's, there's no wrong way. Everybody well, there probably gets is a, a wrong ribbon way. for our pumpkin cutting. You are all the winners. Participation medals. <laughs> Makes me want to eat the skin, but I don't think I'd enjoy that. It's like a potato. Yeah. Or a banana skin. I think I'd eat a potato skin before a banana skin. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. What skin <laughs> would you be willing to eat on television? The mystery skin. <laughs> All right, so here we have the final thing you have to do is you need to somehow get this um, so that it's, it's just it's easier to work with because we still have some pretty solid 
pieces here. Now, you can just mash it up if you don't have your own uh, food processor. And you can take a spoon or you can do whatever. I have cooked with pumpkin in this, in this capacity. But the final step that's recommended by everything online, and everything online is always right, correct? <laughs> is to put it in a fruit processor of some sort. I'm using a Ninja. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you ready? Just press the button. Which button? The top one. I don't know, is it working? Yeah. It's working? It's working. Now, to be honest, Andy, I probably could have baked this one a little bit longer. Oh. I only Set baked it. For failure, I only Jennifer. baked it for about an hour and a half. So you might want to do it longer, and then your your pumpkin flesh will be softer. But there you have it. You've got pumpkin ready to be used in a recipe, or ready to be frozen. You can put it in the refrigerator for several days, or you can freeze it for up to several months, and then you can have pumpkin pie all year long. Can you add sugar? And I'm a big proponent of having pumpkin pie all year long. I don't understand why it's only a seasonal thing. Should be, you should have pumpkin pie on a hot June day just as quickly as you have it on a crisp autumn evening. Well, there you've got it. Get every pie pumpkin you can find, bake it in the oven, get it all ready, put it in the freezer, and then this summer we'll bring out the pumpkin pie. Our recipe involves just five ingredients plus water. And here we go. You guys are super excited, aren't you? Our resident chef's back in the kitchen. For, I get to how use are we going to mess knife. this one up? Well, today we are making pickled onions, and I've got two taste testers over here who aren't so sure about the word pickled. I don't really know but how to Maybe cut we're going to show you that it's better than you expect. Andy's already starting with the onion. You told me it might take a while, right? And so while he's cutting, let's take a look at what the ingredients are going to be that you're going to need today. One red onion, as Andy is working on already. Right? I think also so, yeah. going to need Get one back, tablespoon yeah. of sugar, two tablespoons of salt, oh. a half a cup of red wine vinegar, half yeah. to a three <laughs> quarters a cup of cold water, like and some too. hot sauce. It's All like right, guys. Games with time to heads. get going. No, wait, don't do that yet. Oh. Hold on. We have to cut. No, you, that's good. Stop right where you are. Okay. <laughs> and or like five year olds. Now, <laughs> don't move. Now you need to cut that onion into cut it long ways into strips. Nope, the other way. It's Just round. be careful not to cut your turn it up on end. Oh First, we have 101 of how to cut an onion into strips. I've never cut an onion. But but don't cut your fingers Still because like it could. So Matt, while he's doing that, go ahead and take those strips of onion and just stick them into this mason jar. And then you can. So this is a very simple recipe you're going to discover. It actually just takes a few minutes to assemble, and then you're going to put it into the refrigerator for just at least one night before it's ready for you to consume. Where's the deep fryer? we got to make them tasty, right? For those of us who are looking for something healthy, deep fryer is probably not going to go on uh, that. Onions are pretty right, healthy. Matt, you're is doing right? such a good, Matt Thank is you. such a good you, onion dismantler. Is the middle good to eat or no? It's like yellow. Uh, that's a question I don't have an answer for. Is that for. enough? Or? Well, you can never have too many pickled onions. That'll right? be it. So that's the first step. Cut the onion into strips that was easy. and put it in the jar. All right. Very next step is to add in the salt and the sugar. So we have, we're actually using Himalayan salt today. That's oh, why it's wow. pink. Himalayan. So we need two tablespoons of the salt. And P. Allen Smith requests that like one kosher. Tablespoon? Yeah, we're working off of. Uh, not so accurate measures today, but you know that's that's how we're we're normally work. very precise around here. <laughs> yes. So two, two tablespoons those. of the salt. All right. Next, we need one tablespoon of sugar. Can do that. What do you think, Andy? They smell okay by themselves, but by I don't like texture of the onion. Just one of the sugar. Just one of the sugar. Sorry, I'm yep. Okay, so we're done with all the dry ingredients. See how quick and simple this is. See, guys, this is great so far. Yeah, so far, this is great. It's going so far, great. This is great. Okay. Yeah. Next, we have the red wine vinegar. We got half a cup of red wine vinegar. Go ahead and pour That's that homemade, in. Homemade, right? That is. We are using homemade red wine vinegar. That's not a requirement. That just happens to be what we have. Um, vinegar, of course, is a key element in any sort of pickling. And then we need to add in about a half to three quarters of a cup of water. We just want to. Why don't you just get that so that that mason jar is about halfway full with the water. 
How long does it take to pickle? Is that like a week process? Well, you know, it is an ongoing process. So the longer that you uh, wait, the more intensity you're going to have, but also you're going to lose crispiness with your onions. So this is the kind of thing that you can enjoy early on crispy. And then later on, you can enjoy them on your sandwiches because they'll be a little bit more limp. Yes, the final ingredient oh. is hot sauce. Easy, easy on the hot sauce. P. Allen Smith recommends three or four drops. Oops. Um, <laughs> Five Kelly, or six will do. Kelly, our traffic manager, did this and actually What'd used hot sauce, and she used more, and it turned out really well for her. And so we had to trust Kelly. Well, all right. Andy, I'm, you I'm can not going to eat it. I'm going to have okay, like a little bite. Okay, final so thing. Just put it. the lid on it. And shake it. You can shake it a little bit. Yep. The hot sauce is sitting on that top onion. <laughs> you can shake it, Andy. Thank you. So look, you get to use the big knife, you get, get to use sugar. hot sauce, and uh, sugar and salt, very simple. It's gonna be perfect, right guys? All on board with the ingredients, now we're just nervous to try it. Okay, so that was, that's the one that we made today. This is the one that we made yesterday. Take a look at what, what has happened uh, since it just sat for one night. Look at how beautiful that color Take is. Look, Andy. Just get, prepare yourself, that's a, that's a precursor to let you know how incredibly tasty it's going to be. So we got some forks over there. Can I use the knife? Pickled onions. Uh, <laughs> I better not. Pickled onions. Here we go. Oh, All right. Try it, Matt. <laughs> Come on, Andy. You can do it. Ugh. Hey, I am impressed with you because you ate the whole onion. Oh, so I don't have to. You know what? Onion. You know, I've been on here a lot saying that I'm not sure if I'm going to like something. Ah. And I actually really think this is good, Andy. No, it's not. Yeah, no, I promise. I told you I like onions, though. Yeah, I don't like onions. It has a very strong aroma, which might turn some off. But honestly, that is not bad. it's pretty good. Well, you heard that straight from both of them directly. I'll be honest, we, oh. we walked into this segment today, and both guys are like, mm, I'm just not, not sure about this. OK. The vinegar is it's yeah. like, it's it's almost like a Permani Brothers coleslaw. Yeah, it's strong. Which is strange. Yeah. All right, there but you got it. Pickled onions from P. Allen Smith's recipe. Welcome to our Lost Creek Care Center. Stop in the kitchen today, and today we're making a gluten-free, low-carb recipe that I actually created myself, and I'm going to pitch it to Matt and Andy and see what they think of it. Back in January, I was diagnosed with, uh, actually I was not diagnosed, I was told to go on a low-carb, gluten-free diet. And so suddenly I was finding myself trying to figure out how I could incorporate high protein, high protein was added in, high protein items into my diet and keep everything else. So I have tried all kinds of different things. I've waited until I've perfected the recipe oh, okay, good. to bring it to how you guys. How many times have you had this meal? Um, well, let's see. How many weeks have we had since January? <laughs> okay. I think well, I've week. had it probably three out of five days every week oh, since wow. January. Okay. But I've, I've discovered that you can twist it and change it and, and make it creative okay. and different. But I'm going to give you my classic favorite recipe. So if you're looking for a low carb, if you are looking for a high protein, low carb, gluten free, soy free, it's not dairy free, but it could be. Basically anything that fits your needs, here we go. Does it taste like chocolate? Well, I'm sure you could adapt it to make it oh, taste really? like chocolate if you really All want right. to. Then I'm on board, let's go. We could use Nutella instead of cream cheese. Yeah, All right, good. so we that'd are starting out with, it's actually a lettuce wrap adaption, so we need some lettuce. And I have done a lot of research on lettuce over the past few months. You can get huh. um, your regular, le you can get your regular iceberg lettuce, you can get, um, um, romaine lettuce. I've tried all of these and I found the best lettuce wraps are done with living lettuce. Living. Living lettuce. So guys, if you want to take a what, slice what of the living, living lettuce, well, it comes with the roots. I'm not exactly sure on all that, but Do the reason the I roots? like this is because it, it it's larger and you can yeah. fold around. It looks like a wrap. We're there ready. you go. Yeah, we're good to go. So okay. we're going to start out by spreading some spreads on here. And the first spread that I use is cream cheese. Hmm. Now, if you don't like cream cheese, you don't have to spread cream cheese on, <laughs> you your, your, on, on your thing or not. And I pick the Arla cream cheese because it's actually a very healthy cream cheese, and I am very picky on these kinds of things. Cream cheese, guys, would you like cream cheese on your thing? I would prefer not, but if you want to make one for yourself. There you go. For myself, huh? Yeah. I don't like cream cheese. Well, I like about cheesecake. You could make two. You could make one for All me, right. and you could make one well, for yourself. Uh, just for demonstration purposes. Here you go. One that you don't have to eat 
and one that you can it's eat. It's not a big cream cheese guy. No, I don't like it either. Right. You I don't might like it change either. But Andy today. and I are, we're picky, so. We are very picky. So you at home, try Kimmel some court, try sure. some cream cheese. <laughs> exactly. And you can see, I like it because it adds. The next one? The next will be hummus. I add I red pepper hummus, hummus, hummus next. Hummus and That's now, a go. Now, again, you can use whatever, whatever type of hummus you like. I personally like the red pepper hummus. Here, I got you a oh. brand new fresh Fresh Thinking knife, so ahead. you don't have to you don't have to contaminate it with uh, with the cream cheese. Do you, do you do a thin spread, or do you really yeah. lap it on there? You know, what here's it? where it's really whatever you would like it to be. This is a very adaptable recipe. Do thin. I'm going with thin spread. All right, that's a good thin hummus. on one side, thick on the other. You know, again, I'm really picky on a lot of my things because there's a lot of um, packaged foods out there full of junk. So I look around, I read lots of labels. And it seems like the tribe label is pretty good. By the way, none of these products are paying us, so anything I say today is literally my own personal opinion. All right, so we've got the cream cheese, you got the hummus, and you got to put cream. Oh, you added both. Oh, oh, I'm mine. sorry, I didn't realize we were mixing. <laughs> That's all right. Next, I put on some turkey. Now you could pick any meat that you'd like. Um, you don't have to use turkey. Sometimes I've used chicken, sometimes I've used ground beef, or you can just go without any meat at all. But as I have been trying to add protein into my diet, I've been doing that. But another note, this is lunch meat turkey that I purchased from Aldi's. It's the Never Any brand. Did you know that some turkey has gluten in it? Never. Did gluten. not. Did not know that. Yes, and a bunch of other things. So again, you've got to read your labels and you've got to know what you're actually How getting. How is there gluten in turkey? Well, we could explore the fact that a turkey never really is in the form of a turkey breast that you get in the store, but that's a whole nother segment yeah. that we don't need to go into. So I put in a slice of turkey. Next, I add in some Man's Power Blend Superfood. Now this is like a broccoli slaw type thing, and you've got some right here if you want to try it. Um, this is to add power. in some of your All greens. Right. Now we're getting back some to Some of your it. greens. There's some carrots Now maybe there. if you don't have something like this, you could just do some spinach or you could add in some carrots. Sometimes I cut a pepper and I'll put a slice of pepper in there. Or maybe mm. I will I'm cut, big pepper fan. Maybe I'll cut a, uh, an avocado and put a slice of avocado in there. So here's where you got a little bit of meatiness to it. Okay. I mean, not like, Substance. that's not really meaty, but it makes it right. thicker. Thicker. All right, and the final thing that I put on top of my wraps is guacamole. Holy guacamole! And I like to use, even though it's more expensive, I like to use the minis because, you know, once you open up guacamole, right, goes bad. you have to eat it. So really, you just need a dollop. Oh, a dollop. On top, on top of. Uh, I'm, out of use a spoon. I'm out of clean knives here. Oh, here we go. You okay. can use a spoon. That was pretty good. I'm very picky on my that, guacamole. That a, was that a dollop? I, I would probably do a little more, more? Okay. than that. Did I, I would do one of these single serve guacamoles on probably four of them. So that's about how much you can oh, I'd, you can accomplish out I'd of that. Do an extra or dollop. you can do more, or you can do less. Again, this is a recipe that is designed to meet your personal dietary needs. It can be switched around, it can be changed, but ultimately there's no bread involved. There's no gluten involved. So you're involved. ready wrapping, Andy? Um, I think so. Are we done? That's right. All you have to do then, and don't forget, that's the cream this cheese one. You. Oh, that's for me. Yeah. All right. So all you do is wrap it up. Mm. That's good. Oh, thank you for making me no lunch, problem. Look Matt. At, look at me. Thank you so much. That's no really problem. Good. Let me try this. And there you go. You're all of a sudden, yeah, the well, lettuce What did you do? Just a wrap? Yeah, we'll like one time stuff. over. <laughs> that's really good. Hey. I've got one thumb up. She's made us a believer in a lot of different foods, <laughs> including in our lettuce wrap with turkey. Okay, so if you are on a dietary restriction like so many of us have been placed on, here is a great option. Mm. Remember, you can also uh, adjust it to meet your personal desires. Really good. You enjoy it. Oh. Uh, the good hum that's good hummus. All right, good hummus. very good. Did you good. do block? Yeah, I did block. Go to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com, to view this video again or to see how to do this recipe. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always call us here at TV44. Well, we sure enjoy our opportunities to experiment in the kitchen. We certainly hope you enjoy them as well. If you want to rewatch any of these recipes you just saw, just visit faithandfriends.wtlw.com or you're welcome to give us a call here at TV44 for more information. Now, don't forget the items you see here up on this bench and behind us will all be up for auction at, for bid for this year's auction coming up in just a few weeks between now and then. We're hoping to at least triple the amount of donations we've received thus far. So bring your items to TV44 Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
We're located at 1844 Beatty Road, Lyme, Ohio, 45807. This year's auction is September the 9th, and we certainly hope to see you there.